Okay, so there's two ways to approach this problem. Let's do the way that is safest, but not necessarily most direct. It's safest because you may not notice a certain pattern. But let's start with the question first. Integer v. What do we know about it? It is the square of an integer. So for instance, v equals 5 could not hold because 5 here is not the square of an integer. However, v equals 4 could work because the square of an integer yielding 4 is 2. That is 2 squared equals 4, so therefore v could equal 4. And that's great. We found a number for v, and so what we're going to do now is plug it in. And we're going to see which one of these gives us a integer. So we start here. Or actually must be the square of an integer. That's what the problem is going for, so let's write that down. Square of an integer. So we're looking for a through c, which one of these must be the square root of an integer. Another way of putting it is when I plug in v here, this num this square root of 81 times 4 or 81 times v must give me an integer. So this may be a little bit daunting, but I want to show people how it's not. If you do 18, 81 times 4, 324, it's daunting because you may not be sure if that's a square root of anything. It is, it's 18, but you don't have to know that because we can break this up into square root of 81 times the square root of 4. The square root of 81 is 9, the square root of 4 is 2, so there's 18. So there's an integer because both of these resolve into integers. So, so far so good. A works. Now, let's look at answer choice B. We have 25V plus 10 times the square root of B plus 1. What can we do with that? Well, we can plug in our V. Remember, V is 4. Plug it back in there. 100. 10 times 4, or square root of 4 in this case, is 20 plus 1, which gives us 121. And you should know your squares. You should know that's 11 squared. So this is the square of an integer. So that works as well. Finally, with C, we have 4V squared plus 4 times the square root of V plus 1. Now, we plug our 4 into there, we end up getting here 64 plus 8 plus 1, which is equal to 73. That is not the square of an integer. So, boom, just like that, A and B are our answers. Now, while this way is direct, it gets you there. It's not always the perfect way. It doesn't really cinch it the way another example does. And, or another method does. And what we can do here is notice a certain structure. Let's go back to A. We have a number 81, which is a, ends up, when you take the square root of it, giving us an integer. Now, when we put a number here, V, which we know is also the square of an integer, it doesn't matter if V is 16 or even 121. When you take the square root of it, it's going to give you an integer. When you take the square root of 81, it's going to give you an integer. An integer times an integer is always an integer. So now we have that really secure feeling. A is definitely 100%. It works. But what about B? What's going on here? And so I want you to notice interesting format here is this, the idea of square root of V plus 1 squared. This is a form you will see in more advanced problems on the GRE quantitative section. And when you have root V plus 1 squared and you actually write it out, that is using the FOIL method, you end up getting V plus 2 root V plus 1. What do we notice? Well, instead of our usual x squared plus 2x or v squared plus 2v, we just have v, but then we have 2 times the square root of v plus 1. This form is very similar to b. Look, 25v plus 10 times the square root of v plus number 1. So therefore, this is actually equal to 5 times the square root of v plus 1. If the square root of v is an integer, integer times 5 plus 1 will give you an integer, hence that works. However, if we go back to here, what do we notice? Ooh, this v square business, this is warping the form formula or the format here, which is v without anything. And therefore, you can see that c is suspect. It doesn't have a tidy resolution like this, and so it doesn't work. Again, a and b are our answers.